Hey guys, welcome back to Face the TV. You are watching the G2A.com December Cup for North America with me, Diddy, Kate, and James. We're Best video game store ever. Cheap as duck. Cheap as duck. Cheap as duck. So we're on to the next map, which is Inferno. This is Iber Power's choice, and it's map number three. Both teams, uh, Mouse Pass and Iber Power, have now claimed a map. Iber Power uh, managed to bring it to do a crazy comeback for the uh, most awesome Dust 2 seen in the world um, at, at the beginning of the series. But uh, Mouse Pass ended up winning that one. We just saw uh, Iber Power taking cash, as, as you'd expect, but it's still pretty close. And now we're going into Inferno. So. Who, who do you think has the edge here? I mean, obviously, Mouse Baz, who have won every single knife run today. I mean, are they, uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably win this knife run as well. So they're probably gonna, I'm just going to assume they're going to start on CT. In but how do you think this is going to go, In James? the break, Ban accused Mouse Baz of trigger botting knife runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <coughs> no, one would expect, no one would expect a knife cheat. Just, just saying. You're going to give people ideas. Just, just saying. But um, I, think, I think this is... The thing is, like, every map... Every map I look at with Bye Bye Power, for me, it's like how effective can Skadoodle be? I mean, you saw against Denial, they really, really, really exploited the kind of oh. the Skadoodle factor. Oh, are they going to lose their first knife round? <gasps> oh my god, it's, it can happen. Oh, look, he's twitching. Look at his elbow. Oh my god, look at his shoulder. Um, so, <coughs> yeah, uh, every map I look at with Bye Bye Power, I look at how can they utilize um, Skadoodle and what tools do the opposition have to put a stop to it? Now, I think this is a map where Skadoodle can hold angles and really um, cause problems. That said, from looking at how Mouse Baz are playing to today, I feel like they are more prepared than um, yeah. a lot of teams with the way they're working as a unit. They and, know uh, how he plays. the flashes and so on. Of course, they know how he plays but as well, as we saw from that Russian dust. Team. Exactly, yeah. They were exploiting that a lot because it was quite clear that Skadoodle won, like, was doing that repeatedly. That was a thing for him. Yeah. So they've really done their research here. We have to bear in mind, though, that this is a, a best of five, which means that there are five maps for them to um, know his habits on. But this is a map, again, where the, the authors can really rotate to different places and just have it. Have uh, a three man hold here on the B site from the counter terrorist I by Power team. Currently, four people on Banana for the T's, setting up for the grenades, but um, seems they might have their number here. We do also have Skadoodle in a great position, so they are very well prepared for this push. Dazed with uh, the first frag, AZK going to help him as well, and Skadoodle. I mean, this is just working out a treat for the Iba Power team. This is going to be a very important round for them. Going to allow them to get their money in the right place uh, to start off with. Again, AZK has no damage on his armor, so that's a $350 helmet. These little things we have to bear in mind because that allows him to go straight for an M4. Again, if he had a, the slightest chip on his armor, that's a thousand. That's a thousand dollars. That's either a FAMAS or, or a shotgun, or you know, I'm an still SMG, worried, etc. I, I still get worried sometimes when you see. Players sometimes go straight for the M4 when you really want grenades on the map like this. You need a lot of grenades to hold those choke points and be able to counter, kind of flash when they're pushing into positions, which is this. I don't know. I feel like grenades are so powerful on this map. I can't really emphasize that enough. So let's we'll see if the, the straight up M4 is going to be uh, a safe choice here. But they do have good positions. They've got one guy on balcony, ACK in the pit. And they are actually kind of slowly constricting around the A site here. Moving up quad, moving up arch side, moving through library. And that is actually Tarek getting a kill on the back of Swag. Pit position, so strong. AZK really locking it down. And we're going to have another frag from him as well, as we do have Cutler and Peter, who are trying to uh, still get some damage done. And a Mag actually picked up by Cutler. This could be interesting here. If, uh, if you can get close enough. Yeah, this is really the issue. Nice shot there from Peter, able to deal with Skadoodle. We are going to get the plant. This is a huge round here for Mouse Baz. So much damage done. And the plant. And the mag at this range. We might just be able to find something, but no. Cutler does go down in the end. But three frags, a bomb plant. They have to be laughing right now. That's an amazing result. It's interesting what you say with the nades. I, I, I think that, um, again, from what we've seen from Unu Ain, X, X, Y, X, um, X, y, X and G <coughs> on Inferno, and the way they use the flashbangs, I think... Uh, when you win a pistol round, it's the flashbangs that are going to be the most important. And if you look at how Skadoodle and AZK were playing the A site, you had Skadoodle, he was the one who didn't have a rifle, he only had a pistol, and he was um, holding apps while AZK was in the pit. Now, if you switch those two players the other way around, AZK's got the rifle and he's um, in the apps, and Skadoodle is in the pit or playing site, if he has a flashbang, he can pop flash his teammate in, and he can use that to um, easily clean up apps if anybody's there. 
So the f you know the, well, the, the, the way they had their team laid out, they could have uh, changed it a little bit to to enable themselves to do that kind of thing. But the, the other thing about the, f the flashes is that the flashes allow you to efficiently use your smokes and get the most delay out of your smokes because with the flash, you're able to have a bearing about like kind of where the t the enemy team is and how likely they are to push your angle. If it's just like one guy that you see or you have a feeling that there's only maybe one guy there, you fl when you flash out and you, s and you have a look, you don't need to use your smoke. You can just wait and wait and wait with the smoke. And then if they, let's say, fail to push on, on middle um, as the tease, then all of a sudden, um, let's say they're coming back to banana, that you still have so much time left on, on, on your smokes and maybe even mo uh, incendiaries as well. They can't do anything. They, they, they can't move. And it, then they get forced to a really awkward play and you, where you have a big advantage. So a lot of this map for CTs is about consistent delay. And uh, that's why, that's why some, we see some of these teams you know, really struggling with the newer lineups who don't have the ability as a T side to uh, consistently have the right nades and the right movement in the right places at the right times to break positions to get really good, good, uh, a good potential to take sites. Just a small note, if you are a fan of throwing smoke grenades, this is a position where Exist likes to throw a smoke where he's going to A. This is for Banana. If you stand in this corner, um, unfortunately... And Forest. It's uh, And Forest, excuse me. It's one of these, um, these notches here that he aims for, but I can't remember which one it is, but you can test it yourself. There's, there's but it um, lands on the car right here and allows the CTs to um, have an aggressive smoke on Banana and have two smokes in the bag to continuously re-smoke it. One of the, it's one of the, uh, let me just see if I can find it. There's like a decal up here, which is, it looks solid, but it's actually not. It's this one, I think. You can actually throw it straight at this. It looks like it's solid, but you, the, the grenade will just go straight through it. Really? Yeah, the wow. grenade just goes go straight through it. And that's Fake actually, chimney. that's the one that I saw from Forest. It just throws it straight through this. <laughs> and it uh, goes all the way over the top and lands lands in this area. Which is quite nice. There's this like a million smokes to do this, uh, to do all over this area. So there are, and you'll it, see it's more hard to go wrong. On our YouTube channels, very, very soon. Again, if you are, you know, we, we are um, a group who have streams in Australia, in North America, in Europe. If you can't stay up for all of them, you can find VODs of all of those matches on uh, youtube.com forward slash face it VODs. If you want to see some fancy videos by DDK or highlight videos from uh, tournament days, etc., then you can go to youtube.com forward slash face it com. So two YouTube channels there where you can... Uh, Keep up to date with all the action at Face It if you can't stay up for all of them. I mean, that would be a lot of Red Bulls. In other news, we do have a recently uh, released skin that you can find on the workshop. Again, we do use the contributions for our skin towards um, the leagues that we run. You saw two leagues from us this year, and you'll see more next year. So uh, we do have the M249 Warcloud. So in case you buy it by accident, make sure you do it in style. Uh, Bit.ly forward slash Face It 249. If you're a fan of this skin, if, if you want to support Face It and uh, want to support our leagues, then definitely check that out and give it a thumbs up. I think we're going to be ready to rock just in a few seconds now as Swag has done some reconnecting. So, And I, and I also put a lot of random videos up on my own channel, 4K DDK. 4K DDK. <laughs> if you didn't know, Dan used to be a sponsored Ricochet player for Team yeah. 4K. <laughs> By Ricochet, I bought him Quake. Uh. I'm just a troll. I was all in all the big teams, uh, UK teams, Team Task, then 4K. Oh, when cool. 4K was terrible, though. Beca and it was because... Oh, it, it's because it wasn't it's you that made them terrible? It's because I I felt guilty I wasn't practicing enough at that period. So I didn't re-sign with Team Task. I was like, well, 4K have good, nice shirts. So I'll, I'll jump on them. Oh, dear. They're, they're, uh, wow. Because I was only going for... I only that went grim to, uh, reality. I only went to a series of the SWCs for them. So it w and then well, that was it. So it wasn't a really long term. But anyway. He goes, he goes with the fishes. He's polluting the water. Is that why he's off Cloud9? Because he's a water polluter. You're just going to leave that there, right? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. We're going to see the push coming in with the Tech Nines and smoke coming in a little bit after the fact there, but it doesn't really matter too much. Eco is going to be able to take down quite a few players. But that said, actually, they do take down Daze and Hiko straight away. And to pick up those weapons is going to turn into a nasty situation. And that's, that's what we saw there. They didn't get a peek onto Banana. So they didn't know the rush was coming. The smoke is thrown after the fact. And they, it's all too late. They caught nades in their hands, yeah, pants around their ankles. We have seen that a few times. Not pants around their ankles, but caught with their nades uh, today. Potty set especially up. on Inferno as well. Can't beat the heat and potty setup. Heat and potty. 
Apparently, okay, these guys can. Apparently, you can. <laughs> apparently you can beat it immediately. Oh my god. He's got time as well. Yeah. But the idea is not to peek when you're doing it, so that they have to come really close. And then when one of them comes into the, the really tight angle for you, then the, the other guy is, is, is visible from the other guy. So it's <laughs> that's at least the idea. Anyway. The classic crossfire setup. Yeah, it's, on it's, the it's, just a, it's just a really tight crossfire In the days setup. before Molotovs. That's true, yeah. Things have changed now. You can Molotov one of those uh, positions from uh, Banana. Problem is, when you do that, it's like, I never know if I want to be heating or potty in that moment. So I, I, always I, ha I always have an argument. I'm, you know? I'm heating. I, are you black heating? Yeah. I'm black heating, yeah. I, <laughs> get, I need to get a picture of heating and tweet it and say heating and black heating. Because I kind of, well, people say I look like heating. I, I don't, but okay. You don't agree? I d I, okay. I think, I think, <laughs> I think there's a, he has bigger arms than I do. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. He's got he's got a certain degree of vascularity that you'll never have. As James. as as hey, <laughs> as they would say in uh, certain parts of London, he is wedge, hench, or hench. Well, he's, he's been doing the Rari workout. He has been on the Rari workout. <laughs> right, so we, ha we do have the slow mid push in from Mark. As they've been, uh, they took the early map control up on Banana and the apartments. And now they're uh, content to get up middle. Meanwhile, Abba Power feeling the presence, oh, falling back to luck. safer positions. HP. And uh, we've seen the nades coming in now, uh, a little bit defensively from Abba Power. Mouse Baz, they're going to be facing three players here on the A side. The bomb towards b the this banana side, bad. this is a big risk. Push. Big risk coming in here. Abba Power have not lost a player yet, and they've got, an, they've got no reason to uh, remove anybody from their setup on A. But it looks like we are going to see Nico moving through Speedway. Tarek not getting the frag. That is a really big deal right now. Hiko staying alive here. seconds. They've got to do something fast. Hiko gets the kill on Tarek as well. And now he's going to be able to come in and help Dazed, who is on first oranges. That's a great first frag from Dazed. Spraying down the rest. Nice play there from Wide by Power. And that, that kill on Hiko, that was really, that was, a, that was a massive deal there. If Hiko goes down, the round could look very different. Producer Reese was saying that. Mouse Baz have started their first two games uh, going going down a fair few rounds. They take a few rounds to warm up, and it seems we're seeing the same thing again. There was, uh, I mean, that that was a very brave call to send the bomb on its own very very late into that round, but they were just 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 a little bit too slow there. Bomb ended up facing crossfire between, uh, well, not even crossfire because the guy on the site was just holding, not revealing himself for the longest time. Made it impossible for the bomb to go down. Now we're seeing four mouse pass players pushing towards the B site. It's going to be a two-man hold here if they go anytime soon, but that smoke is going to cancel those ideas. So they're all going to be loitering around mid for the time being. Just going to be plain poking with uh, on this eco. Only two nades to speak of, both of which are on Haze. Let's have a look and see if he has any plans for those. Is walking with the smoke out. Got his uh, Area 51 with Fnatic snickers on. There's that basic smoke on the arch, which will be a bit of a telegraph for the CT side. Little getting the first frag. Tries to go for a pop flash, but uh, throws it onto the site instead. Have the advancing T's now going from the arch area and quad. Have swag here to help Skadoodle. With an amazing snap, there's those uh, orb skills coming to play with the M4. Minimal damage here for I by Power, only only losing one player. No bomb plant for Mouse Baz, and that's a big 5 0. This is where you say something, DDK. <laughs> I love that. That's the, that's the best handoff I've ever seen in my life. Boom. This is where you talk. All right, so we have a 5 0 scoreline here for Iber Power, who are definitely being quite good. They've got all the, the incendiaries to work with as well, which is quite awesome. They are going to be getting uh, pushed up against the Tarek, who's going to run through the Molotovs, and he's cut, it's caught between two Molotovs there. Uh, did his team, uh, did, did, did his teammate throw one? It seemed like it came from another angle, but either way, he's going to be going down to Tarek early on in this round in, in the endeavor to take Banana. It's not going to happen. They've got the middle smoke here in front of that car. And this is a really, really great smoke as you can, of course, have a very good idea quite safely what's going on in Banana. And they're going to fall back now. And uh, Mouse Baz, already down a player. Finesse, Peter, and Hayes, all with a significant portion of damage dealt to them. So this is a very, very tough situation for them. I mean, they've got to make a good call here. They are all still over by Banana, and they do have 
three Molotovs, actually. So if they know all the Molotov spots, they could coat the site in the Molotovs. But the problem is, is that Daze is really close here. If they don't account for this, it could be very painful. Daze is going to fall back a bit. Oh, is the push going to come in? It's so tense. They're just waiting for it to happen, but yeah, they're backing away with the bomb now. Navi mode. Or you could even say that mode, the way they were playing yesterday. That are very impressive. Here we go. Daze back into the position again. So far, going unnoticed. Oh, oh, holding it, holding it just a little bit too long. Hiko in the back now with the M4. Missing all the bullets, pretty much. That's not going to cut it. He was scanning around. Does manage to save Hiko just for a moment longer. But he will go down inevitably so. As Skadoodle working in more frags. It is so effortless for Skadoodle. He is such a good AWPer. And uh, thanks to him and AZK, they're going to be able to clean that one up. But that was... Uh, it really felt like Mousepads wanted to do something other than B, but they just they didn't feel like they had any other option. Yeah, this is this is looking ugly at the moment. It's looking like uh, Mousepads are kind of semi-committing to these pushes, and then yeah. by the time they do, like Skidoodle, for example, is just uh, just emerging from from the ether here and there, and it's just when it's the time runs out and it's time to plant the bomb, it's just absolute mayhem. I think already having used quite a few nades and. Been quite low and healthy. Was scared of a sort middle as well. But they hadn't. They didn't gain any ground there. These holds on banana are looking easy for high by power. Yeah, and this is this is a really big problem because it, it seems clear as well that mouse pads have been struggling to get into the A side of the map as well. They're able to get into middle, but then then actually moving up arch, moving up quad is really the problem. They're not really challenging this area at the moment. It's going to deal with the uh, pick on to Haze there over in the apartments is something give, going to give them an even greater edge as we have three players left from our spads. And once again, they're able to get the easy part of middle, just moving up through this initial choke point. But they're all going to go up arch now as they have smoked off quad. Good swag though. Expect that swag to go for these uh, frags here with this flash. That's a good flash. In goes the incendiary as well. And that's going to deter them. It's going to divert their their uh, traffic here into the B side of things from CT spawn. Oh, the CT is expecting this. Day's still holding out banana. Hiko has smelled a rat, and there are three of them heading his way. Now only one left. They're getting cut down left, right, center. Uh, FNS with zero frags. Wow. So, what is the solution here for Mouse Baz? I mean, they're they're not giving themselves enough time to. It's, it's that factor as well. You get below 40 seconds. You don't really have any frags on the board. You're nowhere near uh, taking a site. You start to push. <coughs> it's mayhem. You don't have enough time to successfully clear the site and plant the bomb. You might try and plant the bomb fast. You get shot. The bomb goes on the floor. There's mayhem. Discoordination. You don't know who should be trying to plant the bomb. You know, it's just madness. 7-0 for I buy power. This is a pristine CT side for them so far. I mean, I, I feel like they're trying to force uh, force picks in a lot of spots, and it's really hard on this map to force picks. You don't get your open angels. So yeah, look how passive they are, just at the bottom of exactly. the It is an eco round, but nonetheless, every round they've just spent so much yeah. time here. Not really forced each here. The CTs haven't really been challenged in these positions on A. This is the thing, like, I by power aren't trying to give them any opportunities to get picks. They're, sta they, they're abusing the fact that, inherently, this map, you can play behind a lot of choke points. And the, the T's have to use grenades to get through those choke points safely. But the picks, and they're going to have the push coming into P once again with these Tech 9s. They're going to largely get shut down. But we need to see uh, basically better grenades, better flashes moving into, in, into the A side of things. I mean, it feels like they're very afraid of, of, of quad side at the moment. Very afraid I of, buy of that, that uh, angle in, avenue into pit. I buy power are storming through this map at the moment, but. It is 8-0, but it could end 8-7. Who knows? Mousepad's definitely not out of this yet, but of course, they need to uh, have some strong rounds to get their confidence back and put some question marks in the heads of Iber Power. They're going to be playing with complete confidence now. They are definitely in the driving seat. And you can see, um, now we have a faster, more aggressive positioning early on in the round towards the A site. You can see them starting to clear apps. Well, four on A here, though. This is an insanely <laughs> nice uh, read from Iber Power, or, or basically straight up gamble. Um, I, think, I think they had some very initial fast aggression on B, which it probably served as a deterrent, and they instantly rotate somebody back to the day. Well, Mouse Bads have not found much success on these B pushes, but nor the A ones either. Let's see if they're able to push through here. Smoke's all over the place, and Hayes unable to find his way through Balcony. The pick coming from Finesse, though, and uh, he's going to get his pick as well onto the library side there, onto Skadoodle. That's, that's great work here. They are finally finding those picks. In the pit, though, so far he's been an unstoppable element down there. 
Oh, swag from Graveyard. Good stuff there. Gets created upon by Tarek. AZK, AZK is still in the pit, though. Look at Hiko's position. For the longest time, they haven't seen the bomb. Excellent frag there once again from Peter, but for the longest time, they had not seen the bomb. Hiko had no, no choice but to kind of hover around Speedway just in case the rotation came in. They wanted to be close enough to the site. Now he's stuck versus four. So finally, Mousepad is going to get a round on the board. But look at the health. Hiko could easily get a few frags here if they show themselves. So they definitely need to be careful and uh, make a safe exit. Their money is not spectacular by any means. We can have a look. But that round as well, I mean, we saw quite a, f quite a few counter grenades and and uh, from either power and obviously Master has chucking in a bunch of smokes as well. But they basically just got the picks and that, that's all really. I mean, they, they, it was the picks that allowed them to get positions, not the grenades really. And this is, uh, and because we saw four players on that site for either power. So obviously, yeah, once they started to get the ball rolling with those initial couple picks, it was pretty easy for them because they got a lot of skill. But um, they, I don't think that's like really reliable. I'm not yeah. sure they can find consistency behind that kind of a strategy. Well, let's see how Iba Power change things or if they'll just play the same round again. We've got Skadoodle having a look in mid. It's going to be completely white, though, uh, from that flashbang. We've got a nade in the middle of mid as well. Skadoodle with still somewhat of an aggressive position here, going to be looking towards second mid. Is he going to have anyone peeking towards him anytime soon? He may well do. CT is meanwhile are pushing Banana pretty aggressively. This gives them a lot of information. And largely, Mousepads haven't really been pushing anybody up deep Banana to remove it from CTs to, again, put that obscurity there to, to their play in the eyes of the CTs. They've been leaving that for Iowa Power to just have all, a lot of the time. And Days now, he's going to abuse that. He's up close. That's going to free up a player to go back towards A. And I don't think they've, they've even realized that B is deeply, this deeply held. Otherwise, they might feel like they could just bum rush it, assuming they might be one player there. But another one with the trade there. Good stuff here from the T's, playing good fundamentals here of Counter-Strike. Trade those players on the entries. Now, look at the time here. 35 seconds left. Mousepads have to make sure they don't spend too much time just standing around top mid. They have to push a site here. You can see the doubt coming in from the CT. Seiko again rotating back towards B as the frags come in on A. Trade's happening. You can see if the hold will happen here. Only swag versus two players. He is entirely um, capable of doing this. So we're going to go down and we have a uh, two-on-two situation, but a long rotation time for Iber Power. And it <laughs> I think Iber Power... Um, so so we had a day's fall back from Banana, and during that, that round, we had Finesse actually moving back up. But actually, actually hold this for Is Day's going to be able to pull this one off? He does have a kid, actually. It's two players. This, this should not happen for Days. Tarek there, going to play with him all day in pit. And uh, over days goes. Wow, that's a fast frag from days. Definitely uh, giving it a good go there. But it was quite funny because that round we had Finesse. Um, when they were pushing up middle, he went back on B actually. And Days had actually retreated all the way back to B. So they realized that Banana was completely up for the taking. So they could have actually all rotated back. And then Days heard Finesse running on Banana. So then they actually interpreted that as a uh, double back as well. Then they start rotating back, so they, they remove players from A. So <laughs> they kind of fake themselves out there, which is quite funny. The mind games. Yeah. The mind games. So Mr. Standin Hiko still contracted to Cloud9, but I'm sure he will be released once they are entirely happy with their uh, new roster. Is top fragging here for the I by Power team. He is 12 and 4 at the moment. I'm sure IBP will be pleased with that. In the meantime, FNS has finally made his way onto the scoreboard with one kill. Tarek is topping the board for his team with six. Still a six-round deficit here, but the money uh, slowly but surely um, sapping away for the CTs. As you can see here, there's going to be another full buy coming out. So while right now we have uh, Hiko, 13k swag with, I think he had 12k. Now all of a sudden he's got five because he just had to spend a hell of a lot of money. Um, so let's see if Mousepads can keep up this momentum and break I by Power's economy, then again, they could entirely make this 8-7. But their own economy, not doing very well at the moment. Tarek's got 5,600. The rest of his team have got uh, little bits and bobs. Um, Hayes and Pete's, Pete's have got nothing in their pockets but knives and lint. So we'll see who takes the advantage here. We have a three-man push from the CTs down Banana. They're going to try and secure this again. It's going to be Tarek. He's got to watch out for those flames. Might see some uh, grenades going through towards the tree as well. That is an excellent grenade, but uh, Tarek's going to get the first frag. And I have power getting four frags straight afterwards. This is... I don't even know what to say. I have no uh, words. Someone passed me a dictionary. Don't look at me, man. I'm not a man of a dictionary. 
I'm not a man of crazy dictionary. But it's, it's interesting here because uh, Ibo Power are, are being allowed to be aggressive on Banana pretty much every round. There are, there are a lot of teams who like to pre-nade Banana as the T's to at least like, maybe even just like a deep Molotov, which lands kind of between the, the car and the sandbags to at least like stop them really getting any comfortable positions and then at least push it up with one or two players. You know, there's lots of teams that do that just to remove it from the, the CTs. And Ibo Power have been taking Banana a lot. And this could be a way from us, but with some good grenades to maybe find some frags. But, but uh, so far, they've they've not really been uh, going for that kind of a play. They are charging on mid at the moment. They've forced the Doodle to retreat, but can they take advantage of it? Swag gets one kill through the smoke. Spamming with the 5-7, gets another one as well. Skidoodle holding roll well with the uh, first fourth kill. He's going to be only piece left. That oh is God. a clean sweep for I buy power. 10 to 2 now, and they are looking like they're going to take this mass battle. That was outrageous. Definitely going to need more than two rounds if they are to mount a comeback on the CT side. That was outrageous. Yeah, I, I really want to see them just like shut down Banana hard against the uh, Power here. Just use those, use some great grenades. Either way, um, do you really see a mass coming back into this on the CT side? No. Nope. Because it, it does feel like uh, Iber Power are going to have a much better uh, shot. On their side. I mean, they could, but I just think uh, Iba Power are too strong a team. If Mass Bass only get two rounds on the T side, I think it's just yeah, of course, yeah. the mountain's far too high. Yeah, yeah but definitely. the thing is, it, it comes down to temperament as well. I mean, these guys, they believe in themselves. They are doing absolutely outrageous work at the moment. They've just qualified for a huge tournament in America as well. They, they will have the confidence that they can do this. And that does count for something. Hayes, 7 HP, looking for a 3 match. It does, it does definitely seem that they don't, they don't have a consistent answer of how to bring themselves onto A, into a plant. Because if we think about a lot of these rounds, can you remember rounds where they got a plant on A? There's, I can think of me one or two times at most. I can think of one round after we were pointing out that, they, that their lack of aggression towards A early on in the round where they had four or five people <coughs> very far up A, uh, and that was when Iber Power had the stack there. Yeah, yeah. But other, other than that, that's a good point. If they if they go up against <laughs> against the European teams with these kind of tactics on Inferno, they'll get eaten alive. Yeah, I think so as well. So we have to bear that in mind as well. They, I mean, their CT know, side, they don't have to worry about it that much. Yeah. But it's all about T sides, I think. Uh, yeah, you have to you have to force the issue. And we do have a, a retake of Banana here from Mouse Baz, so they're forcing the CTs back, but Iba Power really, they spotted this, and they're already going to float a player back from CT Arch, and they're going to go for a, a three-man setup here, and of course this is a great response from Iba Power, they're making the correct call. I mean, of course they don't have to sit here forever, they might even feel like they can pop flash a teammate over, they do have a flash, I do believe. So they can go for that if they want. And in fact, Daze is going to do it without a flash, and he's going to get a kill from it too. He's going to quickly check for more players, and he'll spot the rest of the team. That's actually worth dying for now, because they have two players left on the side. Instantly down by Cutler. That's a great shot over by Coils. And now Cutler gunning for the next player. These entries are incredible. That is definitely going to be helping a lot. Wow. I mean, that's the kind of, that's the kind of uh, amazing individual play that's great. You can't rely on it, though. You can't rely on Cutler to just instantly kill two people on the entries here. But uh, I, I did like that push from Dazed. ATK in with an impossible task, it would seem, as he does get taken out by Hazed. And uh, Mouse Bar is going to manage to force an extra round on their side. That was a nice uh, smoke kill from Hayes as well. When you're spraying through smoke, you have to bear in mind that your tracer fire will reveal your position. So uh, the opponent can send some volleys back your way with a general idea of where you are standing. And that's what happened if they get it right. So, Mouse Bears uh, giving themselves a little bit more breathing room, but still, I mean, their Asper's looking worse than mine right now. They definitely need to, def they definitely need to bring this fourth round in the bag and uh, win the pistol afterwards. If they can do that, then they'll be in good stead. They're Meanwhile... push Banana again and Deep Smoke at it. Uh, deep Smoke down there as well. I uh, how once again, taking as many liberties as they want on Banana. Yeah, they're just closing off half the map right now. And the thing is, is that... Uh, Mouse you know, pushing up middle. They don't seem very concerned by this. They have a lot of time in the round. They could feasibly wait for this grenade, uh, this this smoke to go away, and then try to either flash through just as it's dissipating before the re-smoke comes in, or or just uh, see what they can do before pushing middle. But they're going up, and Iber Power are removing themselves from the close positions. They're all the way back. I have to see if uh, 
Master Spaz is going to be good on the picks. We know they have the aim. Pico, great angle found by him, by Library. That's good enough to take the frag there. As Hayes goes in to the balcony, he's going to go down to AZK. With Cutler and Peter there. As the trades do come in once again, heavily in the favor of Bye Bye Power. And there it is. I'm wondering, as a terrorist site on Inferno, if you, yes. if you see a strong push down Banana from the CCs like that, I mean, firstly, you, you have to assume that most of the time they're doing it with three players, right? No, I don't, I don't think I don't think it's a assume that always, but some teams do tend to... That's quite common. It is common. Right. So my, my point is, if, if you think that that is the case, where is the missing... Where do you think the missing person is on A? Is it likely that Arch it's always is empty? Arch. Exactly. So is there, is there an argument to say, see, see that and then immediately just rush towards us, throwing flashes towards the uh, quad. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty pretty good response. But we do see that the three players do fall back almost immediately, usually, so... We've had a few nade fails here this match. We have seen some, but Skadoodle in with the excellent 50-50 work here. Nade fails and aim win. So the bomb is down, and it was down very early in oh, Banana which is a difficult situation for I by Power. Still a little bit paranoid about the flank. We've got Cutler just loitering around A with 17 HP, and uh, Hiko just standing in the middle of A at the moment, unbeknownst to Cutler, who's uh, <laughs> sort of Tarek. Nice. Very good stuff there from Hiko. And we're going to see that uh, they actually dropped a decoy onto Banana, which is kind of cunning this late into the round, which have maybe bought them a few extra seconds there. Either way, I by Power get the bomb down, and it's three on two. Cutler and Peter making their way in up middle. We do have a good sight hold here from I by Power. Making their way around quad. They're already the first one going down, and it's going to be second as well. I by Power with a very nice round. Didn't look really in trouble at all, and uh, that should be enough for them to kind of just string a few together to close out the third map. Absolutely, very good way of putting it. That was a really great start, a huge start to Mouse Baz at the beginning of the round. Again, um, dropping the bomb immediately down Banana and getting a second frag as well. But then after that, they uh, went for some additional aggression, didn't go their way, and they do end up losing the pistol round. Once again, we have a three-man stack from the CTs. Initial aggression, and they are going to get the head out of Dodge. Bomb heading towards A at the moment. You can see we've got Peter on Arch and Hayes in apps at the moment, looking for those uh, close-range headshots with that 5.7, but not going to find a challenge just yet. Hiko may be uh, heading his way soon. Some uh, questions being asked by the terrorists, top mid. And only Swag and uh, FNS respectively on the B area. You can see FNS just trying to pre-fire Swag if he goes for the second peak. Swag. Uh, is a very intelligent player indeed. He knows it's coming, kind of toying with the shoulder peak, but decides to back off. I think we have a challenge in Arch at the moment. So we're going down to Tarek. They won't be able to get that gun though, as uh, Dazed is holding guard. Two frags coming in for I by Power now. Bomb going down. Three versus three. Swag getting the Caesar 75. That's, that's a rare animal on the endangered list. Hmm. Stuff there from. Cut there as they make their way back in. Do you have Hayes playing around? He knows AZK's up there, but look at this. AZK playing it perfectly from Graveyard, and they will clean up the rest quite swiftly. So Mouse Fans with... Uh, well, it's fairly likely they're going to go for a stack this round, considering they've got no money to really spend. But where will they go? Or are they just going to split off? Looks like they're just going to split off normally. And Arbor Power going to take this slow, I should think. Once again, you want to try to uh, stick together, clean it out methodically, use your grenades, make sure that uh, no guns can, or no players are isolated, really, uh, or unless, unless they're in a position where the guns cannot be retrieved easily. See a little bit of information gathering there from Hayes. He's having a quick look down mid, and uh, it looks like he is, I was going to say, going to rotate towards B. I mean, for all they know, it could be a B stack here. So Dazed uh, is going first. He needs to discover what's happening. Somebody needs to be the, the guy that kind of has a quick look in and, and sees you know, what is going on on the site. It okay, looks like it's going to be Dazed here. The only guy with no armor, actually. So Dazed with the least investment as the man that's first there. He's not here to get fragged. He's here to just see what's happening. They do manage to take the kills, though. And we do have uh, 
pretty good trades and not the flank being held, but in comes the CTs. They have a fast rotation up into construction already. AZK got to respond fast. Does gun down Hazed, and they are trying to make their way back in. Peter, can he find AZK? There he will. Peter with more to find, though, and not enough health to do it. Good deal with the frag. And Tarek going to be making his way in now. But no kits, unfortunately, for him. Very hard indeed, but some good damage done there. And uh, we'll see that uh, three players go down. But it's match point, and Iber Power soon to close this one out. Yes, Mousepaz being absolutely crucified in this match. And this is uh, almost definitely going to be 2 1 I by Power. We have the uh, what could be the last buy in this game coming out from Mousepaz here. All M4s around. They've got five smokes, so they should hopefully be able to fend off the terrorists for a little while here. But um, Iber Power looking very, very strong in game three of this best of five. Again, this is the G2A.com December Cup grand final here for North America. This is a $5,000 cup. And uh, well, these guys looking for that little Christmas bonus. Again, we'll see a three man presence from the terrorist towards the A site. Hayes with an aggressive position going for some pre fire there, but Hiko's just going to rip his face off regardless. And the uh, Iber Power team. They won't spin off that just yet. Just going to be very patient. Peter with an aggro position with the flashbangs. Does get counter for that. So they're going to get out of there. Tarek getting a penetration kill on Hiko. Four versus four. Bomb still in mid. Anything can happen. Currently got FNS rotating back towards the B side. Towards the B side. Wow. Tarek very forward there on quad. And uh, this is going to mean that Peter has to go to pit here. This as, as a, the lone man, it's the only real chance he can have to defend quad. Good opening kill there, and it's largely unresponded by AZK. That's going to actually force them to go back. That's a wonderful job done by Peter. Um, Tarek taking that risk on quad by himself, but seems like it's under control at the moment. And Cutler should get a free one on Swag, but no! Oh, Swag dear. gets the headshot with the AK-47. They're going to make their way back over uh, Arfaness and Peter. But uh, with Swag in construction here, one on the site and one in Banana. This is so difficult. The smoke is even there and everything. So this looks like Iber Power are going to close this one off. And That was a disaster for Cutler. He heard the sound cue from Swag jumping from pool onto barbecue, but he just, he just extended himself a bit too far to ensure he got the frag. Could have potentially uh, popped Swag's head from behind coils, but he wanted to make sure. And instead, it was Swag who made sure that that ended the match for Mouse Pass. So it's going to be 16-3. to three. Very solid showing there from Iber Power to make it 2-1 advantage. Yep, and we're going to move on to Nuke next, which is Mousepaz's pick. And, well, it's, it's a game of knives, I guess, <laughs> mostly. Speaking of knives. What What about knives, James? Should we do the sub giveaway now? I don't know, James. What do you think? Should we? You're the giveaway, man. You, make the sh the, you call the shots. We could do it now, or we could do it next map. Okay, I think we'll do it next map. I don't know. I think we should do it now. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. It's, it's, uh, Why are you making life difficult? Like I asked you, you don't say anything. I say next map, then you say no this map, like immediately. Because it's just a troll. You look all, he looks like a nice guy, but he's a troll. I'm telling you, he's a troll. All right, let's get a break. <laughs>